said, let's just call this podcast the parents versus kids because the three of you band together. <laughs> no, that know. is very much on our side as well. No, no. Shalom, whose side are you on? I'm always on your mother's side. Thank oh you. Oh my God. God. Thank you. Oh my yes. God. Okay, uh, Dad, yes. On a scale of one to 10, how much do you like New York? Namaste everybody, welcome to the Zarna Garg family podcast. Today we have a full house, all five Gargs are in. My college age daughter Zoya, my high school senior son Bridge, my middle schooler Veer and my husband of 25 years finance professional Shalab. We are so excited to have you guys. Please like, subscribe and share our podcast with everybody you know and love. We are growing and we want you guys to grow with us. Today's episode is about living in New York City. Living in New York City as a family, living in New York City as a student, the pros, the cons, the costs, the benefits, all of it, the underbelly, are the rats in the subway real? Are the rats mm-hmm. in the subway real? <laughs> People have seen them all over every Instagram feed real. has. Are the pigeons real? Are the trees in Central Park real? real? We're going to get right into it. Who wants to kick I'm off going our first. New York City episode? New York okay. City subway rocks. Okay. I think on Earth. Every day. Twice a day, for multiple years and decades, I started taking it for my first job out of business school, and I do it today to go to uh, my office downtown and come back. And I got to tell you, for two dollars and ninety cents, to be able to travel far distances in a defined period of time, I know that it's not clean as clean as you would like. I know we have issues of crime, but compared to any other way of transportation in New York, I don't think anything compares. To it be clear. Costs. Two dollars and ninety cents is an expensive amount of money, though per per travel, considering how much we all take the subway. But remember, that's two dollars and ninety even to go to JFK. It's not like that amount goes up. But just is. But we all take it like what two to four times a day, right? So I mean, it, it it averages up. Oh no, no, no! But it maxes out per month, right? If you use the same credit card, it maxes out after seventy or eighty dollars, and you can go for free. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yes, good to know. that is correct. It maxes okay. out, or you can get a monthly pass, which is the same thing. It also maxes out per day, I'm pretty sure. There's some sort of max per day as well. Okay, so okay, some people down? in this family love the New York City subway. Yes, Bridge, go. Okay, living in New York City as a kid is the best thing. I would not trade it in the world for anything. There is nothing, nowhere else in the world I could live, whether it be Miami, the best place in Miami, the nicest hill in LA, the nicest wherever in Ohio, whatever, who cares? <laughs> living in New York City is the greatest place to live in ever. Everyone I talk to who lives, doesn't live in New York City, first thing they ask you, you go to anyone who doesn't live in New York City and you tell them you live in New York City, the first thing they're going to ask, oh my God, what's it like living in New York City? I've never been there. I want to know. What's it like? Is it active? Is it never does it? Is it true that it never sleeps? All these questions immediately get asked and it's the greatest feeling to get asked them because living in here is such a privilege. One, there's always something to do. As a high school student, a lot of times, like when I want to go out, First of all, you can go anywhere. Every, everywhere is open. You can go bowling whenever you want. Everywhere has been three blocks. Let's say me and Vera are hungry. We can just go to dinner anywhere. My friends are always within two blocks of me. We can walk anywhere. I think I walk more in my life. Like I don't think I'll be able to walk this much in my life because I can literally walk anywhere I want to. Living in New York City is something that I would not trade for. I, I want to live in New York City until I die. I'll leave it like that. But Bridge, at your age, a lot of almost every kid in America is driving. Do you not miss that? I, I don't need to drive at all. Like Dad said, there's the subway. Um, but do you not miss it? I know you don't bus. need it, but do you not miss? Don't you wish you were driving? No, not at all. Not driving is... People don't realize how much of a privilege it, privilege it is to not have to drive. The fact yeah. that I'm able to not drive, like that's an option for me, is a huge privilege that I'm very thankful and for. And don't get me started on the food. Oh my God, the quality it's, of food. Oh my... No, well, the food I mean, the is... Options, is the, the food in New York City exist. is expensive. It is expensive. Is overpriced. The restaurants, the, I'm not a fan. The vegan vegetarian situation is not that good. But we're not going to get into that. Okay, wait. How I, about I'm a little the curious. schools? I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Bridge. Okay, first, first, I'm a little kind of curious because I've lived in New York City my whole life, so I really don't know anything else. And you guys are like from India to New York City, so you don't really have a perspective on what it's like in America outside of New York City, except for a small time in Ohio. And uh, so I'm curious, what do you think, Didi? Like, what do you think now that you've lived in Cali and City? I love New York City. I think growing up in New York City, as Bridge said, and I think Veer probably agrees, and I can't wait to hear what he has to say as a kid too. But it was definitely the greatest gift 
I could have ever gotten from you guys as parents. It's not been easy. We know that. Being in New York City, raising a family in New York City, not only is it challenging financially, it was taxing for you, mom, to figure out the school system here. There's multiple different systems. It is not easy, but it was worth every blood, sweat, tear. I am the person I am because of New York City. Like the fact you learn how to be independent, you learn you learn how to navigate things so much quicker. I, I would say, I, I always say this, that if I am able to in some, someday make some large sum of money, if I have enough disposable income that I could donate it to one place, I would donate it to my high school. That school, that public school in New York City, just being in the Bronx and going there every single day, taking the subway at 6 a.m. with a bunch of really sleep deprived students for 45 minutes and walking to class and then getting back on the subway at 7 p.m. and coming home. Like the amount of grit and discipline that you learn just by being a kid in the city. Most kids don't get that until they're so much but older, she, if at but all. But Zoya, a 21-year-old kid, in a 21-year-old adult in America is driving. Like you also don't, we don't own a car. We can't because it's so expensive to park it. Do you guys not miss having parents who could drive you around or being able to drive around yourselves and like having no. that kind of... Literally Why would we miss that? Who, what did you say, Veer? Why would we miss that? It doesn't because make any we sense. can't drive you around. Like we can't. But what, what fun is driving around being like... They, no, people get... Like kids get dropped off to school, picked up from school, like... Activity you know what's movie? fun? Walking Veer to school and seeing him and picking him up six blocks away with a coffee from a phenomenal coffee shop and getting a bagel with dad afterwards to talk about all the amazing things that Veer said on that five minute walk and how we can't believe he's 12 years old. Like that is like, it doesn't beat just being able to walk in the city. I will say bridge. I mean, to actually answer your question, California does offer so much and it would be, it, I was going to say weather people. I mean, the, the debate is as old as time, right? I think that what I did right is I went to a place that wasn't exactly like New York city. The culture is very different. So I get to experience both, but growing up, getting older, learning what it means to be an adult. Oh my God. Oh my God. Growing up in New York City gave me every value, every trait that I'm proud of. It's all because of the city. And it's all because of you guys as parents raising us there too. But what about the school system? It's so hard. You guys can all I, went I? to... Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, we're... No, you're yeah. good. Just, just finish your question. I'll New answer. York City public schools are huge. They're messy. They don't have the infrastructure that a beautiful school in California would have public school. They don't have the infrastructure that a nice suburban. Do you guys not miss having the fields to play football and basketball and baseball? You didn't have any of these things in your schools. Do you miss that? Do you ever wish you were in an affluent suburb where you would have all that as part of public schooling? Okay, I mean, I'm we gonna... pay a lot of taxes to live in New York, but it's a very expensive city to live in. So we don't get all the benefits that suburban schools get. Okay. Can I answer the question? we you want, okay, I'm yes, going to answer yes. and then give you my view on New York. So, okay. Um, the public school system is like a big hit or miss because in some places they just excel in terms of like the kids and giving you an experience that you won't get in another city. But in other categories, they're not as good. So they are really underfunded and they do need a lot more money to pay for things and um yeah that's it and also they we do have access to like sport fields and stuff like that like my school has a basketball gym oh, so why yeah, are you acting you like you would let us play football anyways let's say we yeah, have a football field yeah. so they- <laughs> no, I, okay, I Vera, what was your take on new york yeah i think new york city is like the greatest city ever because every every other week mom will ask me Veer, do you ever think about moving to the suburbs? And I'll be like, no, no chance. New York City is like the greatest thing ever. Like I mean, even in 2016, the- when we were considering whether to move to Westport, where we had the home, uh, was it 2016 or 15, something around that, um, or to stay in New York, we asked this question. Veer was very little at the time. Was he even born? Yeah, he was born. It was very little. But we asked this question. Uh- he was, I was five uh, years old. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, but everyone picked New York, including you, by the way. I Zara. did, but I've had a very complicated relationship with New York. <laughs> yeah, I've I was going to say, wanted, I was waiting for always, this. Yes, I, I was, was waiting for <laughs> I think it's so expensive. It's unnecessarily expensive. I wish I, you know... There's been years and years of my life where I wish that we had just moved to a suburb, saved all our money and like bought a house that we would have owned by now and all of it. But equally, as I've said, during the COVID years, I fell in love with New York, the way New York came together. I built my comedy career during those COVID years and thereafter. I don't think I would have the career that I have if I was not in New York City, which is a world capital of comedy and also the capital of people who are just wanting to, like their ambition has no limit in this city. And there is something about that in the air that makes you want to push yourself, even though you're depressed and you're sleep deprived and you're probably in therapy and you're, you know, drinking too much coffee and all of that. So I understand it, but I've had a very complicated relationship with New York. But today in 2024, I'm very pro New York. But I do get frustrated with how much taxes we pay, how the tax money is spent. So it is a problem. Like, I wish I could have a say. I wish somebody watching this podcast can call us and be like, how would you like your tax money spent? Because I would tell them not the way you're doing it. Well, <laughs> mom, one thing that I think you and I talk about a lot as well as, as women, right, as women who want to yeah. work, New York City is a great city. And yeah. I would say that, for example... Something we talk about a lot is like beauty services. This is going to sound really small, but it's actually really problematic, right? Like her and I both have to get our eyebrows done, upper lip done, nails done. All that stuff has to happen every single week. And it's a pain. But in New York, there are so many women that have to look professional and have to actually look presentable in that manner that there's a nail salon and a threading salon and a grocery store and a pickup stop for your kids and all that stuff exists all in a one block radius so for a working mom who needs to maximize every minute of their time she so my mom can go get her nails done do her call with some important person get her eyebrows done in two seconds get on a flight to go to her next show that can all happen and that can't happen in any other city when yeah. i'm in california the day gets half the day is wasted with me running around and trying to Uber from one place to the other, driving, carpooling my friends because we all want to do appointments on the same day. If I was in New York City, all of that would happen in a tenth of the time. And that is stuff that you have to do as a professional working woman in New York, unfortunately. That is the that is the standard. And, and so I do think also a uh, vertical living, apartment living is very friendly to most to a lot of people, especially working women. It feels safer if you even just have one doorman or some sort of security at the door. Thanks. You're not living by yourself. And a life where 90% of our things are packages delivered all the time. It feels safe when somebody is there to receive it, sign off on it. There are a lot of pros, but you pay a lot of money for that. You pay life. a lot of money. I have another question, though. You yeah. guys talk about like being a working woman. It's good to have those places. But also, most of my female friends say how dangerous it feels for them sometimes to live in the city. Yeah. Yeah. And like this, the, how when it gets dark, they get really nervous if they don't have a, either a large group of people or someone big, I guess, to be around them. Is that, I mean, obviously that's yeah. real, but like, how does that affect the way you look at the city? That's real. Yeah. It's that's real. real. As a high school student, especially I, yeah. because I was coming back from like the West Bronx at like 8 p.m. every night on the subway, I was definitely worried, but I think it teaches you how to be really vigilant right? If you're not vigilant, I, I think the people that should be scared are the people that don't learn how to like, you can't have your headphones in on the subway at a certain time. You can't be falling asleep. You need to be texting somebody at every moment where you are, who you're with. You need to be with people. You have to be doing scans. But I think those are important life skills that really teach you how to be a safer person because you can get in trouble anywhere. If you're not paying attention, you can get in trouble anywhere. It's true that you have to be on hyper alert in New York City, and I'm not taking away from that. But I feel like my street skills, those are things that have transferred to even a safe place like Palo Alto. And I'm really grateful for that. Wait, okay. Didi. Yeah, go ahead. Can I, can I just finish my thought about my view on New York? Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say, so there's two reasons that I love New York so much. Number one is that the kids that I meet are like, it's just an insane, like, variety because one day I can meet the richest kid I've ever met in my whole life 
And then the next day I can meet somebody who's dirt poor and they're trying to figure out every meal to meal. And the second reason is that everything is in a two block radius. So I could walk a block away, play basketball, and then I can walk another two blocks and go to one of the best restaurants I've ever been to in my whole life. It, and it's just so cool how everything is so close to each other. And even if it's not, I can just take the subway five minutes and I'm right there. Right. You're yeah. not there allowed you to get in the subway, Veer. What are you talking Why about? Why is he not allowed to go in the subway? He's not allowed to go. We, you're not taking the I subway by yourself. I see seven-year-olds on the subway nowadays. No, not what? alone. Not what? alone. No, I, I go with my friends. I don't go by myself. No, what? you're not allowed to go on the subway. I told you to take the bus. Okay, he's <laughs> what fine. What what is is Mom, he's fine. He's like so smart. He knows what he's doing. He's a New Yorker. He knows what he's, yeah, he's a New Yorker. We trust him. Okay, yeah. one thing that I think that we do need to talk about, though, that I do think is really, really negative about New York is... New York is a culture of spending money. Yes. It is not 100%. that case in the rest of the world and in the rest of America. So in California, yeah. if you want to hang out with somebody, I typically will get a $2, $3 like tea and we will walk. And they're about beautiful... smoke weed or what? No, dad, <laughs> no. We will go. California and smoking weed is synonymous. Weed. No, York, she's not smoking <laughs> cigarettes. I'm no, not smoking Zoya, anything. Not smoking I don't touch weed. anything. Why would you say that, Shalab? Like, I, I mean, Zoya why. might not, but I'm just saying her friends might be California. No, no, no. Every no. third person in California smokes weed. You know nothing about California. You literally just think California and weed because you think that it's a leaf and California has leaves. So therefore, marijuana and weed. No, not that. <laughs> but what I think that is, I think that what is exceptional about in California and the rest of the U.S., I don't even know about the rest of the US. California specifically, which is often really compared to New York in my other experience, is you can go for a walk. You can yeah. go, you can go, um, you know, I don't know. We go to the pool a lot. We do all sorts of things that have nothing to do with spending money. Whereas if you want to go anywhere in New York, whether that's a show, whether that's um, a coffee shop, whether that's a performance, any experience in New York City, you are spending a bomb to be there. Yeah. Because you can't just hang out outside the things that are free. You can't just... Including attending your yeah. mom's comedy show. Yes. No. Okay. Well, yeah, even that, because you're, you're paying for public transit and you can't walk My there. My point right? was a nuanced one. Oh, that yeah. it also okay. offers you the opportunity to build it's, that revenue. Oh, that's a good Ask your mother point. where she makes the most revenue per unit of hour of work that she does. Okay. And she's worked okay. in Canada. Yes. Yes. And also, in New York City has the world's first Indian mom comic for a reason. Yes. Because the opportunity yes. exists. And th I think that's the point dad was trying to make but before he got sidetracked. No, it's an incredible point. It's opportunity because it makes me think. I Right now, I'm working a couple of jobs. All, all of them are possible because I met the right people in the city. Like I met people who everyone needs help in the city. Everyone needs help. <laughs> everyone. The CEOs need help. The people who aren't CEOs need help. Even the interns need other interns to do their help. I almost <laughs> hired here yesterday. I was thinking about it, but I was like, okay, I'm not <laughs> going to. But everyone, everyone needs help, right? So I was thinking, and all the jobs I have now is because I met people. And when I reached out to them, I was like, I remember we used to meet each other. We had fun. Um, I'm looking for a job right now. If you have anything, that was it. I didn't even send my resume. I literally just asked them, like, how are you doing? He's like, yes, perfect timing. I need someone for my tutoring. Um, I remember texting her, uh, my boss, and she was like, this is perfect timing. I need someone because everyone needs someone. And mm -hmm. the opportunity is always there in the city. It's always there. I don't know how you would meet as many people as I do living in the suburbs. Like, if I lived in Connecticut, I don't know how I could build my network large enough so that I always know that I can meet someone and yeah. you know have that in your life. I just don't know how you could meet people like that. Yeah. You, know you don't know because you don't live there. Once no, you live he's there, right. He's right. No, the, the opportunities are greater in here. Just say, let's just call this podcast the parents versus kids because the three of you band together. <laughs> no, that is very much on our side as well. No, no. Shalab, whose side are you on? I'm always on your mother's side. Thank oh you. Oh my, my God. God. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you like New York? I mean, I like it a lot. I mean, I, I don't know how to characterize it by numbers, but I would also not live anywhere else. It has, you know, pace. It has ambition. Um, the food is fantastic. You know, it supports my celebratory once a day meals. I'm able to <laughs> order from all kinds of different places. Um, and, you know, it's not just that you can eat Italian or Mexican. You can eat ethnic variety within the primary cuisine as well. 
So you're not oh, only just going to get All right. North Italian and Southern Italian and, you know, similarly <laughs> North Indian and South Indian and West Indian, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that makes it really good. I mean, this, I don't want to eat Mexican food cooked by Chinese people. This is a podcast about food. Okay. Yeah, that's, all right. He's, just, he's hungry right oh, now. Wait, I want to bring up one negative though for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of things. One, I've been robbed, I think, two or three times now. Oh, two, oh my yeah. God. I, I got assaulted in a park. Yeah. So I got assaulted in a park. Well, it's a lot more context than that, but I did get assaulted in a park and I got robbed. So th- these are things you got to live with in this city is anything I can mean, happen. Dad, you're like, oh, but I love it. But I love it. Like, Because I wouldn't, that. 100%, I wouldn't trade it for anything for the same reason that you guys brought up about, Didi brought up about, you know, you drink coffee or you brought up, you drink coffee, you go to work, you come back, you're stressed out. You try to spend time with your kids and you go do the same thing over again. You get two hours of sleep at night. That is that is such a beautiful life. And it's just such a cool thing to me. The way I see it is that you're constantly doing something. You're constantly moving. And I just think that's such a great way to live. I would never want to live in an environment where sometimes where I just go home, I drink my coffee, I, mean, I drink my water, I watch a movie, I'm mentally stable. Like all those things just seem... But it seems boring. You also don't know. That's the thing. It's like the thing that that's why I'm just I was so I'm so Bridge obviously got into Cornell. Yay, Bridge. Um, And he's going to Cornell and we're so excited for him. That's why I'm so excited for you to experience just a little bit of a different pace of life. Obviously, there'll be New Yorkers there, but it's going to be a campus. You're going to be in the middle of nowhere for the most part, which is good because you can't live your whole life thinking that drinking coffee and sleeping two hours is the only way that people live their lives. That's the only thing. Another thing that I think is New York is very New York specific is people who live here tend to never leave. And so they don't know any other way of life. Yeah. And I think that's something that mom has been really, really pushy about. And I think it's great that you go somewhere that's very different than just like being in the city again, because you know exactly what that life is, is, and it's not going anywhere. It's true. Right. So what are the, besides your dad and his whole sidetrack into the restaurant <laughs> journey, what are the big culture things? Is there anything about New York culture that you guys are like, I, I'm so glad I do. Th- do you actually care about the museums and the Broadway shows Hell and no. the things? No. That's Hell people no. think it's New York is about it. Nobody even yeah, cares no, about I, it. Veer is so, even, what Veer just said is so facts. Yeah, it's so facts. What do people said. think that like Broadway and like Wall Street is what New Yorkers care about? Nobody even cares about that. Or the or honestly, like the Met, I'm sure everyone's heard of the Met Empire State Building. Most if you ask a normal family, an average family who lives in New York, none of them have ever been to the Empire State cruise line to go there or whatever. Then no one's ever done that. That's not the the people who live in New York and love it don't like it because of the museums, I the attractions. I, pass, I used to pass by the net every day, the Met every day. And I would I wouldn't even go in the museum. I would just stand outside of it and play football with my friends. <laughs> Nobody yeah. even cared about it. It, so it, it's, it's the not, culture. It's the it's, pressure. The thing I love the most about the city is the pressure and the constant feeling of if I don't do this, I'm I'm always it's like everyone's fighting for the same plate of food. And it's like if I don't do my part, if I don't work hard, then I know someone's gonna pass me. And the feeling that I know that someone right next to me is gonna pass me because I didn't do my part or I didn't work hard enough, that's what makes me feel the most. But don't you love think that that's also going to give you mental illness and like all kinds of stresses related to like, it's a lot of anxiety to live with. Maybe this is why we're all so anxious all the time. But the suburbs like make you lonely. Of- People are lonely in the suburbs. They don't have, you know, there is school shootings in the suburbs. There is. They, oh, uh, dad, there's, 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 <laughs> there's, there's uh, let's not get into school shootings and violence in New York City because there's certainly. Or, or school health, honestly. Or school, yeah. The water fountains can kill you with this yeah, one. They, but, the, 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 yeah, oh no, I my agree. God. I think, um, yeah, no, I think another thing would, I, I actually forgot what I was going to say. Somebody else go, <laughs> sorry. No, I mean, listen, it's, it's, this episode is about what it is because I know that I never cared about the museums and all that. For me, it was always about the work. For your dad and me, we came here for a job. It was about the ambition. It was about like meeting other people who were like at the top of their work. Why why you guys are making inside jokes between the three of you? No, because I. Why does everything have to involve you? I don't understand why every every time someone laughs, you're always involved. Why why the three of you? We're paying attention. We were obvious. Does it make sense to you that you're having a side chat in front of my face? (laughs) 
<laughs> Quick question. Is it okay for me and Didi to talk about things and not tell you about it? No. No. Okay. Dad, all right, yes. All right. You don't have to involve dad in everything. <laughs> I think I think you can you're both adults and should do what you want to do. Thank you, Dad. We, I appreciate it. Oh my we god. Do it and he she will just say upset. anything. He will say anything. And to don't get, even get, get me started on my conversations with Veer, which obviously you know nothing dude, about. Dude, mom. mom just called okay. me and Veer the biggest betrayers in the world because we didn't tell her about a conversation that we had with you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay, can we get back on topic? One thing that I want to say though, um, that I this is another thing that I think is very New York amazing. New Yorkers are doing the most in every vertical, right? There's comedians, there's entertainers, there's finance professionals, there's lawyers, there's students, there's all sorts of people. I think that, for example, in the Bay Area, one thing that I don't love is while everybody is actually amped up, people are really ambitious in the Bay, people are ambitious in tech, right? It's so tech focused. Like the conversation is always about technology. Whereas in New York, you can have an amazing conversation with somebody who's so ambitious, but they're so ambitious about like singing. And you're so ambitious about, I don't know, math. Shut up. We can see you eating. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) He thinks he's like doing it on the sly. I'm seeing you chewing. (laughs) Can you just hold off for five minutes? Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. No. I got hungry. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Okay, I'm let's finish out this episode. Let's finish yes. out. Okay, all right. Yeah. No, it is the truth that there is a lot of industry. There's a lot. It, it is the cutting edge of a lot of businesses. Uh, there are pros and cons. Of course, the biggest con of New York City is the cost. It's the cost of living here. And, uh, you know, if you can deal with it and this is something you ever I mean, want to do. Healthcare too, Zarna. We've experienced that, right? Healthcare what? can be a real challenge. In That's everywhere yeah. in America, though. Oh, oh, no, oh. Way, way more in New York than anywhere else. Way Your more Your mother in New had York to York. get a, like a minor surgery done a couple of years ago. And to just get that little surgery done at the hospital. It was, and to make, yeah. it, it was really a pain in the neck to find a doctor to do yeah. it. And, and we don't have relationships. Out. We don't have relationships with any doctors because they keep moving. They come, they go, mm-hmm. they take insurance. They don't like, it's not as stable as a nice suburb where the doctors just live there and they form their relationships there. So the healthcare, even though it is world-class healthcare in New York. For it's world-class day, for very advanced disease. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, it's do you want to move some... to a suburb? You no, keep no, no, bringing no. up like a nice suburb. I, I swear, it's just... I'm just making a point that it's not all gun. It's all not roses. There are some trashy parts too and healthcare is one of them. That's all. Yeah. Well, dealing with the everyday of it, yes. But the nitty gritty episode... can be shitty. <laughs> <laughs> see, did you see? He's stealing my lines every day. And oh. this episode was about New York City life. We just wanted to give you a slice of what people who have raised a family, who've been a family in Manhattan, in New York City, in the thick of it, what we think, what are the things we value. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We want to hear what you think about New York, what you want to know about New York. Put in the comment section, like, comment, and share this episode with everybody you want and who you think might have an interest in New York City or have an opinion on it. As we end every episode with a segment called Good Grades with Garks, where each garg assigns another garg an A grade based on what they brought for this episode. It can be entertainment, it can be education, it can be the moment of the episode. So let's find out who gets oh, a good grade today. Okay, all right, Zoya, you go first. I always go first. I'm so type A. I want to give the good grade to our wonderful parents who decided to raise us in New York City. It's not been easy. The two of you have sacrificed so much to make it happen for the three of us. And I am so, so grateful. And it's given me so much. So thank you so much for putting in so much work to get us to be able to live here. Will you put your Uh, money where your mouth is? (laughs) if If I have a dollar or... As you and I agree, I will pay rent and live at home, but at a subsidized <laughs> rent, a yes. very, very low yes. rent. Done. You're done. But done. A Deal. rent that is very, very reasonable, given that I am related to you. Like, fr- friends and family discount, obviously. But. She's basically not, saying free. <laughs> not, not She's very, saying that so you can say, oh, yes. you, it's okay. You can stay here for free. No, She's trying to make happening. you say that. <laughs> that is not going to happen. Okay, who wants to go <laughs> next? I'll go next. Ag- yeah. I want to give my A grade to every single human being that lives in New York City. Every single one of you, every oh. single one of my brothers, my sisters, this place is so special because of all of you guys. I appreciate everyone here, every single person, the crazy people on the subway, the normal people <laughs> on the subway, the people who are crying on the subway, 
the people that are like knocking people over on the subway. <laughs> Every single person who lives in New York subway. City, I'm so thankful for. Every single one. Yeah. Oh, that was Aww. so sweet, Bridge. Thank you, Bridge. That was, yeah. I probably inspired it, but yeah. <laughs> How did you inspire oh, it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants to go next? Who wants to go next? Shall I, Beer? Um, okay, I'll go next. I'll give my grade A on this one to Zoya, who did a very good comparison between California and New York. I thought it was pretty cool, um, mm. but took the final analysis this thing for New York and also because she chose to say no to weed, even though it's a statewide problem epidemic in California. It's not an epidemic, it's legal. I don't know if it is. I I don't think it's it's an epidemic. It's very much legalized. Yeah, and, and I, somebody said I it's mean, actually safer than drinking. So there's a whole okay, debate. Okay, on all right, we're not gonna get but into that. Has that. No, okay. <laughs> okay, Veer, do you want to go next? Last, what do you uh, want to do? I'll go. I don't really know. I feel like everybody contributed, so I'll just I'll just distribute the the A grade equally between everybody because mm-hmm. obviously everybody has their own perspective on New York. That's it. Okay, I think my A grade goes to Shalab. Because uh, it was his original vision that brought us to New York. It was him 25 years ago saying, I want to be where all the action is in finance. I want to be at the cutting cutting edge of finance and I want to give my ambition a shot. And that's what originally brought us here. Even though I had ambitions, I'll tell you, I was very happy to live in a small town and save every dollar that we could and put it away so that we could be rich right now. But instead... We are not rich and, uh, you know, but we have a lot of hope. We have a lot of ambition. And it was your dad who set that path for us where he said, stop worrying about the future and take a chance on yourself, take a chance on the family. And uh, that is something that has really been the North Star of the Garg family and probably true of every immigrant family that lives in New York, had one person who said, I want to take that chance. In our household, that was Shalab. So yeah. thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a great time. Please like, follow, comment, share. We want to hear what you think. And tell us what you want our next episode to be about. And can't wait to connect with you again. Thank you so much. Everybody say bye to people. Bye. 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 bye.